What is up, Adalo makers? Today, I wanted to quickly go over the design workflow that we've found works the best for working with responsive apps. And by far, the most important thing about responsive apps, if you don't hear anything else in this video, is that you should really start with the smallest screen size that you know your users are going to be using. So if that means that you know you're going to have a, you know, a mobile app, you need to start with a mobile app, right? Um, if you know that they're going to be using it on a tablet, but not uh, maybe their phone, start with tablet, right? Um, and this is mainly for, for a, a couple of different reasons. Um, but the main one is just that it's a whole lot easier to scale things up in responsive apps than it is to try and scale them down. And what I mean by this is that on um, if you start with a desktop app, um, chances are you're going to be, you know, doing something like this, right? Where you've got um, all of these tiles everywhere and all sorts of things like that. And then when you go to scale them down, you know, you'll have to go in and, you know, add lots of custom logic to make all of these things kind of fit down into uh, a smaller, uh, into a smaller space, right? Um, and that's a whole lot harder to do than doing it the other way where maybe you want to design the mobile app first and then kind of expand out into uh, maybe a desktop app or something like that. So um, if you don't hear anything else, just know that it's much, much easier to start with a mobile app than to start with, say, a desktop app. And um like in this case, uh, I've started with a mobile app here. I've just got kind of a basic profile screen. Uh, when I expand this out, you can see that I have a couple of issues here. Um, everything else looks fine, but maybe I want to move this membership card over to the left and move this, uh, this visits list up and to the right kind of beside it, right, um, to make room for maybe some other information. Um, if I were to say do you know have this right here the way it is now and maybe move this over here you know and make this look more like a web app so you know something like this and then maybe I wanted to you know uh, let's see this is actually a group let's ungroup this real quick maybe I wanted to grab this and you know uh, uh, you know move this up into you know beside this to make it look more like a web app. Um, you could certainly do this, but then when you get down into the tablet view, um, you're kind of scrunched up, you're kind of, yeah, now what do you do? You've got elements hanging off the screen over here. I don't even know where my, um, where that email element is. I'm kind of just kind of guessing. Um, so if you start with mobile first, um, it really makes it a whole lot easier for you to know where all of your components are and then expand them out into where they need to go, right? So start small, work bigger. Um, the second important thing is working with groups and rectangles. Um, we've got another video specifically about when and how to use groups versus rectangles. So make sure that you check that one out. But as far as groups and rectangles go, uh, they're really, really helpful for dividing up the content of your web apps into logical uh, pieces of information, right? So in this case, I've got my menu bar over here, um, my side nav. I've got a block for users, for views, for links, paid, and then maybe like a block, a rectangle here containing the list of pages along with their views and different things like that. So um, it's really, really helpful to build in terms of rectangles, um, in, the, uh, in, in this case, what I did was, you know, we created the, we added the sidebar here. I've created a background rectangle to house kind of the main content of this. If I wanted to have something completely different over here, maybe I would want to add in, say, another rectangle over here to house something different, right? Um, maybe I wanted to have like a suggested books page over here. Um, or something like that, right? Um, we could very easily go in here and add these sorts of things in and then make these responsive, um, you know, uh, based on the uh, what's inside this, right? So instead of having to go in and, you know, adjust all of the individual layout settings for each one of these things, 
Uh, if I have my things, my information sorted by rectangles and by providing these different containers of this information, it makes it a whole lot easier to visually present this information to my users and then uh, more importantly to adapt it based on screen size. So, um, you know, when I'm going in and actually changing some of this stuff, uh, it, it makes it a whole lot easier to adjust these, uh, you know, just a, a group of information, a, a, an auto-grouped rectangle here, uh, than to just have all of these pieces of information just floating out willy-nilly on the screen. So even if you don't want to show specific containers like this, um, you know, it's really helpful to still put them in containers. Um, I could make this white, right, obviously. I could make this one have, you know, no, uh, no background here. You know, I could turn off the shadow and make all of these things kind of disappear. They're still in rectangles. They're still bounds outside of each individual element. Um, but it's not visible. So you can still do this even if your design or your brand doesn't uh, allow you to, uh, you know, create tiles and uh, cards and different things like that. All right. So those are the best two uh, design flow um uh, suggestions that we have. Start small and then wireframe out what your app is going to look like using rectangles um, and then place individual elements and components inside those rectangles and then worry about, um, you know, adjusting what happens to each element when it's responsive.